Hello, welcome to a mini lecture about the definition of the Jones polynomial. Um, this is based on definition 6.16 and theorem 6.17 from our notes. So, uh, here is the definition. The Jones polynomial of an oriented link L is, well, we know it's called VL, and it's obtained as follows. Take the Kaufman bracket of D, where D is any diagram of L. So pick a diagram of L, take its Kaufman bracket, multiply that by minus A to the power minus 3 times the writhe of D. So the Kaufman bracket is a Laurent polynomial in the variable A. So is this uh, coefficient here. Uh, multiply them together, you get a Laurent polynomial in the variable A, and then I make the substitution t to the one half is a to the minus two. Um, this is by convention that we write it like this, but really what we do is we take a and we replace it everywhere we can see it by t to the minus one quarter, right? That's what it really means. Uh, and then that's the Jones polynomial. So if we define any invariant in terms of diagrams, we need to respond with a theorem that the Jones polynomial is a well-defined invariant of oriented links. I need to prove that theorem. How do I prove a theorem like this? Well, this is a theorem of the kind uh, we've proved several times now in the course. I need to prove that if I change my diagram D by a rightermost move, then this right-hand side here doesn't change. Uh, so let me show you the most interesting ingredient of the whole proof, which is invariance under R1. And in order to prove invariance under R1, we need to remember how does the Kaufman bracket change under R1? Well, that's according to this rule here. And how does the writhe change according to R1? Well, that's according to this rule here. And that's what we saw in the uh, previous mini lecture, and these are uh, lemmas in the notes as well. So, what we wish to do is we wish to show that. If we compute this uh, this quantity that appears in the definition of the Jones polynomial, if we want to compute it uh, applied to a diagram that looks like the left-hand side of R1, then what we get is the same as if we took the right-hand side of R1. So I left the wrong symbols in there. These should be the right-hand sides of R1, like that. Uh, so we wish to prove that. Well, if we want to prove it after making the substitution uh, replacing a's with powers of t, then we might as well prove it before we make the substitution. So it's going to be enough to do this. Right? I can just not do the substitution. Then it's enough for me to try and prove this here. How do we do this? Well, to see this, observe What's the left-hand side? Well, it's equal to minus a to minus 3. What's the rive of uh, a diagram which has a part that looks like the left-hand side of Rydermeister right move 1? Well, that's the rive of the same diagram with Rydermeister right move 1 applied, minus 1. And what is the Kaufman bracket of a diagram that has a part that looks like the left-hand side of Rydermeister right move 1? Well, that's minus a to the minus 3. Let's put that all in a bracket to make it clear that we're multiplying times the diagram with R1 applied. So what's this? This is, well, this is minus a to the minus 3 writhe of that diagram times by minus a to the 3 times writhe, well, to the minus 3 times minus 1, which is minus a to the 3, uh, multiplied by minus a to the minus 3, multiplied by Kaufman bracket of the right-hand side of R1. Well, what is minus a cubed? That's minus a cubed. And what is minus a to the minus 3? 
that's minus a to the minus three. So my minus signs cancel out. Let's let's make a new line, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so this is just minus a cubed. This is minus a to the minus three, so the minuses cancel out, the a's cancel out, and I simply get what I wanted, the right-hand side of the desired equation. So this is why the Jones polynomial is well-defined. Uh, this is why it's invariant under R1. For R2 and R3, it's even simpler, because remember that if I wrote you the equations equivalent to these ones here for R2 and R3, there wouldn't be any confusion there, right? The uh, the Kaplan bracket is invariant under R2, and the writhe is invariant under right under R2. So it's obvious that the Jones polynomial is invariant under R2, similarly for R3. So this was the hardest bit of the proof. So you see, once we've got all the ingredients in play, uh, this, this theorem is not too difficult. And uh, that's the end of the mini lecture.